All right, let's get into uh, what's going on with 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 the immigration policies, because this has gotten a lot of play. And I'm not exactly sure what has driven it. I think there was like National <clears throat> Missing Children's Week last week. And two weeks ago, we had just headlined that story that a division of Department of Homeland Security had lost track of 1,500 kids. Now, these were unaccompanied minors. And at that time, unaccompanied minors were literally minors who came to the border uh, unaccompanied. And because... The Trump uh, administration, is my understanding, is now deeming minors who come to this board to the border with their parents and taking them as unaccompanied. But at that time, these are are children who uh, parents may have said, "I'm send. I don't have the money to go with you. I'm sending you with, uh, you know, a smuggler," or they go up by themselves <clears throat> to escape uh, harsh conditions and where they live. Sometimes, you know, massively dangerous, sometimes without any opportunities to uh, to advance, whatnot. So when they get to the border, the um, the Office of Refugee Resettlement matches them up more often than not with relatives who are in the country. Mostly legal, I believe the relatives are. Uh, That's the way that they would have them. it's conceivable some went into foster care, but this is mostly uh, relatives. Some are end up getting trafficked in some way. But the Office of Refugee Resettlement does not keep, well, it keeps records on where they placed them, but they did not do anything di- di- diligent to find these people. They're not tracking them, which is probably a good thing. Um particularly in this day and age. One of the reasons why people, the the hard sell for DACA, where you hear about there are X number of DACA um, folks, but then there's an extra couple hundred thousand, 400,000 who are eligible and have not signed up is because people were very nervous about signing up for a government program. Because even if they had, they felt that the Obama administration had best of intentions, you know, there's always that one in like, let's say 10 chances that the next president is going to be Donald Trump and they're going to start using that as a means in which to round you up. So it's probably good that the government does not keep intense track of these unaccompanied minors. Although you, there, there's a downside to that too. People get trafficked. You're placing people with with relatives. You don't know. I don't know how much vetting goes on in these situations. Here is a report from PBS Frontline that talks about um, teenagers from Guatemala who are trafficked as uh, workers at an egg farm. And it's um, it's pretty upsetting. It's really modern day slavery. In the United States of America, there's no such thing as a job that you're not allowed to quit. The kids in this case came from, and, and there's an adult victim or two also, came from Guatemala. All right, pause it for one second. Uh, the guy speaking is uh, an attorney general of Ohio, and this is a 2014 case. Um, these uh, teenagers came up from Guatemala ostensibly to, um, well, li- listen to them. From, and, and there's an adult victim or two also, came from Guatemala. was they were they were transported up to the United States uh, and when they get here they're promised uh, uh, that they're gonna 
attend school, that these children are going to have the promise of America. Instead, they get here and they're put in the trailer park in horrible conditions. Well, when we walked in, it smelled like feces and just, uh, just pure pee. Okay, pause it. So here you have a situation where uh, you, several of these teens were released to people claiming to be relatives or friends, and they turned out to be labor traffickers. I mean, this is this is you know this is part of the uh, the problem. And on one hand, you you want the Office of Refugee Resettlement to um, to vet the people that they're giving it. Uh, they're they're basically putting these kids in their care. On the other hand, you know, do you really want the Office of uh, Refugee and Resettlement to know anything about these people because of the circumstances we're in? I mean, the bottom line is there's no um, there's no good answer to that question until we have some type of actual policies that recognize immigrants, whether they are documented or not, are human beings. And uh, there is no there is no collective punishment that we can exercise that is going to keep people in countries that are unsafe for them. They're uh, forced to work, uh, you know, six, seven day weeks for many, many hours a day uh, doing things like debeaking chickens, doing the, the, the kind of work that is difficult work. When it comes time for the paychecks to come out, somebody else, one of their recruiters, gets it. When one victim had the gall to ask for their paycheck, something that people here take for granted, uh, he got hit. He gets literally hit by by the the master. Over here in the right-hand corner, there's bed mattresses. Um, there was kids' shoes underneath there. There was some clothing. This, um, they had a trap door underneath, and then they had this piece of wood that they can slide on top of it to make it look like, okay, there's no one there. And it had hinges to where you can lift it up like this and you can look straight down right on its trailer. And when you've seen it, you've seen a mattress lay there. No toilet, there was only a five gallon bucket. They were going to the bathroom in this bucket. But like I said, I don't, I don't know. That's how I found my trailer. Okay, so ultimately, uh, federal authorities um, uh, found the, uh, the, the, the teens. They were relocated. They were given to uh, social services and legal advocates. But, I mean, this is the dilemma that you have, right? And so of those 1,500 kids, um, the Office of, uh, of uh, Refugee Resettlement, uh, they just, my understanding is they just called. They didn't do any real follow-up. So it's not, they've lost track. These kids are not missing Hopefully, the vast majority of them, hopefully all of them, are with uh, relatives. It is not inconceivable that some of them uh, have been trafficked. We just, we just don't know. And certainly, the new policy uh, by the Trump uh, administration, um, separating children from their parents... Uh, is just, it's sick. It's sick. And as far as I can tell, I mean, maybe there's a, um, maybe someone else can point me to some other uh, reporting. Uh, but in terms of what Jeff Sessions, in announcing his zero uh, tolerance policy for the first time, uh, for first time illegal border crossers, A hundred percent of anyone found to be crossing the border, whether it's the first or whether it's their first time ever, will be um, referred for criminal prosecution. If you are smuggling a child, then we will prosecute you and that child may be separated from you as required by law. Um can I ask when these kids were rescued? Because that seems like something that would not be a priority under the current administration. Oh, I suspect that was actually um, uh, a, a year or two ago. That case started in 2014. 
Yeah. But um, the the bottom line here is, and as far as I can tell, the reason why they're doing this is really simply uh, we want to discourage people from coming up here with their families. I mean, I'm old enough to remember images of people trying to get across the wall in East Germany and being shot at. And I just don't remember anybody anywhere going, good, glad we shot them, we being the West, at the border. Uh, I don't remember anybody saying, like, why would they want, why wouldn't they want to leave there? I mean, I, you know, that is the, you got to ask yourself, why is it when people were trying to escape East Germany, we were, uh, we were encouraging of that. It was horrific, the idea. Can you imagine if someone uh, got out of East Germany and our reaction was to split them up with their kids, split their kids up, send them back? Don't tell them where their kids are going. It would have been absurd. And the U.S. is much more culpable for a lot of these conditions that are causing people to migrate right now. Yeah, we have much more uh, ability to actually help. I mean, if we're really that concerned, um, the amount of money that we spend on sending ICE agents around uh, the country. And now... There's one other element to this that is, I think, um, important to discuss. And that is that this is not 100% new. Um, it's, I, I don't even want to overstate it by saying that. A lot of people have made the point, and we've certainly discussed it on this show, that the immigration policies of Barack Obama particularly in his first term, were also pretty horrific. There was a, um, they broke records for arresting and deporting immigrants. Um, and it is true with, it is true that um, the nature of the arrests were more focused on people who had committed crimes in this country rather than not. In, in some of those instances, though, the crimes are, you know, drunk and disorderly or something like that. They're not necessarily uh, violent crimes. And you have children split up from their parents. So we have had, you know, bad immigration policies, really, for an extended period of time. Uh, certainly, during the Obama administration, uh, it got better towards the end. DACA was a big deal. Uh, extended DACA, I think it was DAPA, right? Would have also been a big deal. Um... There's a piece by Branko Markacek in the um, in the Jacobin that goes through this. And there was a report that was put out um, about the state of of immigration under Obama. But, you know, we've heard from just uh, from our friend Ronald Reagan, who is an immigration lawyer on the ground, that uh, in practice, things are very different. And. You know, it's important to make this distinction. And I am of two minds about this because in this, this sort of ties into this uh, other, other couple of pieces I wanted to talk about. I don't think it's a bad thing. I mean, the, the idea that people are conflating these missing 1,500 kids with the Trump administration's policy now of actively, like, determined first order we're going to use the separation of children and parents as a deterrent to coming uh, uh, up into this country. 
The idea that people are conflating these two things and in doing so are being more aggressive about immigration policy, uh, I'm sorry. I think it's a good thing. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and conflate these things uh, for you. I'm going to try and uh, clearly delineate them. And I don't know. If I had a bigger platform, I would probably do the exact same thing. But I'm also not going to sit here and bemoan the fact that more people are engaged in really looking at the implications of our immigration policies because they're making a category error. I've, I've read that there is some concern that if you start asking for the Office of uh, Refugee Resettlement to, to really get a sense of where these, um, these children are, you're going to create a Gestapo-like agency that's going to be on top of this. Frankly, I don't think there's the competence or the will or the money to do that. I don't think they're going to, I don't think they're going to, like, we're going to be responsive to, um, I don't think the administration is worried about that, frankly. I don't see that as a huge uh, fear. I just, I, I think my theory about politics is you take it where you can get it. And um, if somebody is motivated to get involved in the immigration issue more because uh, they see a tweet about 1,500 missing kids from the Department of Homeland Security, I mean, I think journalists should do better than that because it makes me question their journalism if they don't know the difference. But for your average, uh, you know, Twitter warrior or someone who has just gotten activated, I'm all for it. And it's interesting because it sort of dovetails a little bit, you know, because there's like a, there are some people who, you know, I think it's important to, to that people are aware that this is immigration policy, that the problem is we have a, a failure of dealing with immigration writ large. It's not just a function of Trump, although I'm also not convinced that largely speaking, it's not just a function of Republicans. I, I got to be honest with you, I don't remember too much of the immigration bill, immigration reform bill that was up in 2004, I think it was, or five. And I don't remember too, too much about the one that was up, I guess, five years ago in 2013, maybe it was. Parts of it I know I didn't like. They had like a guest worker program, which I think is a little bit problematic in terms of, uh, the, uh, of abuse. But if everybody gets into the system, you don't have situations like this where you have teenagers who are uh, living underneath a trailer in a trailer park in their own feces so that they can work for near nothing in a chicken factory. You don't get stuff like this. Here is... From GEO News, this, this, is, this is a year ago, I guess almost two years ago, 2016. Uh, and they were really ramped up. There's a lot of businesses that ramped up after Donald Trump got elected. If you were one of those people who were smart enough to uh, go long in 2015 on things like for-profit universities or things like construction of penal institutions or detention centers or detention centers for infants, then you did quite well in the stock market. GEO is a, one of these companies that makes detention centers, right? Was that what you call it, Brandon? Like detention centers, prisons, concentration camps, camps that concentrate people in one area. And uh, in April, they rolled out their new specialized transport buses. Here you have it, folks. This is the latest in transport technology. It is uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, about thirty seats in one of those short um, shuttle buses. Each one equipped with a new Graco high quality. 
a booster seat. There it is, the car seats uh, for all the kids there. The expansion created new demands to an already. So the expansion of the Carnes County Residential Center was completed in early December 2015. So look, this order was not just about Donald Trump. And increased the capacity to 1,158 beds. The expansion created new demands to an already unique transportation mission requiring larger capacity vehicles to provide off-site field trips. These field trips are part of the contract with the U.S. Immigration Customs Enforcement. Field trips are provided to all children ages 4 through 17 enrolled in educational programs provided by the John H. Wood Charter School. So we're going to get it in multiple different directions. There you go, folks. We're going to take uh, field trips. We're going to go to the San Antonio Zoo. There you go. And uh, there, oh, wow. Oh, look at that. Well, I wonder what happened. What, will you take that right there? What, what happened right there? In, uh, oh, there it is. In November 4th. Look at that. Boom. The Geo Group. It just goes up and up and up and up. There you go. Making America great again.